And of course, we're still watching the shares of BP. The stock down by more than 12% today here in New York trading as it undertakes its latest attempt to try to plug its leaking well in the Gulf of Mexico. Let's go now to Pablo Molchanov of Raymond James and Associates. He's a top rated analyst on the stock. He actually downgraded uh, BP from an outperform to a market perform about a month ago. Today, he's lowering his earnings estimates again, and he joins us from Charlotte, North Carolina. Pavel, first of all, I mean, there are no sales on this stock right now. Why just to a market perform? I'm curious. Why not get rid of the BP shares? Sure. Well, certainly the company is not going away. I think uh, it's got solid long-term profitability potential, and it has the ability to absorb these near-term costs uh, in terms of the out-of-pocket spending, plus the legal costs that will inevitably come as a result of uh, the numerous lawsuits. Uh, so I don't want to completely write off the story, but uh, certainly the headline risk uh, in the near term is very high, and there's almost no visibility uh, in terms of when this oil flow will stop. Uh, we had high hopes last week that were raised by uh, some of the leaders in the Coast Guard, and then, of course, it, it all turned to naught, as we saw over the weekend. You know, we'll learn later this week whether this LMRP uh, option will work, but there is certainly a possibility that the oil will continue to flow until August when the first relief well is completed, mm -hmm. which means we'd be looking at another two months of excruciating day-to-day -day headlines. Well, and uh, by the way, we've got the live picture up of the oil continuing to flow out from that leak. Pavel, you said there's a lot of uncertainty, and you talk about the excruciating costs. Talk to us about what we do know, because you did update your cost estimates today. Yeah, that's right. So last week, costs were running uh, at a daily run rate of about $40 million. A month ago, uh, when I last updated numbers, they were running at about $8 million a day. So we saw a five-fold cost escalation. Of course, this relates not only to the higher cleanup costs, but also all of the underwater work to get the well under control, uh, some of the federal costs, and it includes some of the costs to uh, local residents around the Gulf Coast to, to compensate them for lost wages and so on. Uh, none of this includes legal costs. I mean, that is uh, the biggest question mark. Uh, and it's going to remain an overhang on the stock for the foreseeable future. I would just remind people that after the Exxon Valdez disaster in 1989, it took 19 years to fully resolve the litigation. Pavel, you mentioned the next step, the lower marine riser package, followed by the next hope being relief wells is successful for containing the situation. Have you considered, now this may sound extreme, but the possibility that BP just ultimately has to let this well run dry and what the ramifications, costs, environmentally, et cetera, et cetera, could be, again, in your assessment of BP's prospects? Well, I think the worst case scenario is that the well runs for the next two months until the completion of the first relief well. Uh, you know, assuming um, uh, one of the two relief wells or two of them ends up, uh, you know, working its magic, August should be uh, the, you know, the worst scenario in terms of, um, you know, continuing the oil flow. Hopefully it will be later this week, but the reality is uh, nobody knows whether the M M uh, LMRP will work. It's never been tried before at this depth. Uh, so as is the case with the top kill, even if the concept is sound, the reality is the, the execution, the logistics are extremely challenging, to say the least. Pavel Malchanov, the energy analyst with Raymond James, many, many thanks to you.